Hello there, class. This is David Richardson. I said class because this is a Sunday school lesson for today's class. All of the messages that, that you're going to find in the, within this message are going to be entitled a Sunday school lesson for today's class. What it is, I've, my name is David Richardson, as I said on, see on the screen. I'm, I'm a Bible teacher. I've talked to Bible now on the radio for many years, and I now have a ministry to teach the Bible on the World Wide Web. So this is what we're trying to do then this lesson here this lesson as you see on the screen is entitled the seven seals that were open you'll find that information in the book of revelations in chapter 5 verse 1 through 19 and the reason we're starting in that message today in chapter 5 through 11 is just for the seven seals we're not going to cover the entire book of revelations which is chapter 1 through chapter 22 the first part of the book of revelations chapter 1 through 11 19 is the first part of the book of revelations and the second part of the book of revelation we'll find in chapter 12 verse 1 through 22 21 so what uh, this is really all about though is to give you an idea of what took place with another book in the Bible, which is a book of Daniel and also the book of Ezekiel. Those are two books in the Bible that were named after angels. And in the book of Daniel, we find that Daniel was instructed to seal up the book with the seven seals. So that's why we now are giving you this information just on the seven seals and how it relates to us in our life today. Well, the Bible itself was in three different forms. It talked about the past. It's a book of history, which the Bible is. It is also a book that's designed for us for today. Day, and it also gives up some an idea of what we need to do for tomorrow. So it's in the, both the past, the present, and the future at the same time. Before we complete this information, before we get started, let us go through the Lord's Prayer that he prayed for us before he died. Well, he prayed, many of us just say what well, he died, but he prayed for us before he died. And after he died, he was pierced, I mean, uh, before he prayed, before he died, and he prayed for us, and then he died, and then he was pierced in the side, and then he was buried in the tomb, and he, his father raised him up out of the tomb and set him on the right hand of glory where he now sits. So before we're going to get into all that in this process, I'm to, and I am talking fast because this is going to be a long presentation, and I don't want to take up all your time on it, and I do not want to exceed the time that I've allotted for myself to go through this presentation, okay? But now let us pray the prayer that jesus christ prayed before he died now before i introduce this prayer to you that may not have known about it it's in the book of john in chapter 1 verse 1 through verse 26 it is a prayer that i hope for you to learn so i'm also going to make apology right now because before i finish the presentation i may call for me have to stop to drink water things like that so i'm going to apologize for that right now also as we go through this presentation in the lord's prayer i hope for you to stop this presentation on all the information that you're going to receive you have an opportunity to just click it to stop it and study it for yourself read it and get an understanding of what we're talking about and also i'm going to be presenting this all this information is coming from the king james version of the bible but i pray that you use whatever version of the bible that you choose to check out the information that's being presented here including the king james version so you can see that this information is not coming from david richardson it's coming directly from the bible presented to you in a Sunday school class. So yes, I am somewhat teaching a Sunday school class as it were on the internet. That's why we dub our classes a Sunday school lesson for today's class. Okay, now let us get started. This I said earlier, this is a Lord's Prayer. We're going to recite the Lord's Prayer, and you can go along with us. And if you want to, I hope for you to stop this and learn this prayer for yourself. And this, you'll be able to see this prayer. But at the bottom, before I start reciting this prayer, you see, come to BibleClass.com. That is one of the lessons that I'm going to talk about. Now, before we see this, you're going to see the, the Lord's uh, Jesus Christ video prayer. And these are kind of lessons that we're talking about what we are dubbed as to be a Sunday school lesson for today's class. So now let us get started. Jesus Christ, while uh, getting ready to die, looked up into heaven and prayed to his father, saying, Father, that I was come to glorify your son, that your son may also glorify you, as you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, of whom you have sent. 
So I've glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work for which you gave me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify you, me, with your own self, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. So I manifested your name unto the men for which you gave me out of the world. So yours they were, and you gave them me, and they have kept your word. And now they have known that all things whatsoever you have given me are of you. For I have given unto them the words which you gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from you, and they have believed that you did send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them of which you have given me, for they are yours, and all yours are mine, and all you, mine are yours, and I am glorified in them, and now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your own name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. So while I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those that you gave me, I kept, and none of them are lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. Now come out to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. So I've given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. And I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. And sanctify them through your truth. Your word is true. If you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they may be sanctified through the truth. And neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, and that the world may believe that you have sent me, and the glory which you gave Gave me, I have given them that they might be one, even as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me, and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I will also that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory for which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundations of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known you, but I have known you, and these have known that you have sent me, and I have declared unto them your name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. And that's at the end of the Lord's Prayer. You can see it broken down into details to give you information about it. You may not see when you go through this, but stop this information and study this prayer. Memorize it, I hope. And to do that and get details about it, go to JesusChristVideoPrayer.com. Okay, now let us go through this process. Now, with the book of Revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the seven seals that were loosed up on the earth. Now, we're going to be talking about this, but I'm not going to go in the depth and reading it like I just did the Lord's Prayer or reciting the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to give you some information about this that you may uh, conclude when you go through this. We're going to be talking in, about the first seal in a few minutes, but this is the introduction that we're talking about in the seven seals, which is in chapter 5 of the book of Revelations. And I want to point out some things in the book of Revelation that chapter 5 that you will see in chapter 4 and the importance of having that information in this uh, lesson also. That is in chapter 4, the latter part of chapter 4, you'll see that in verse 5, chapter, um, chapter verse 6. In this chapter here, 5, it said, And I be here, and lo, in the middle of the throne, and in the four beasts, and in the middle of the elders stood a lamb, and it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. Now, that's another lesson, and we also, you, you can see that lesson in detail as a Sunday school lesson for today's class, talking about the seven spirits that God sent forth into all the earth. And you and I have all seven spirits within us. We may not know how to exercise the seven spirits that God has sent forth into mankind. And look at verse 11 down here, says that, And I beheld, and lo, there were voice of many angels round and about the throne, and the beast, and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. So these things that we're going to be covering as we go through this seven seals that were unsealed and we're talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ and the lamb, we say that right now is the Jesus Christ that we're going to see. But I hope for you to now to stop all these slides that we're going to be presenting 
even in the ones who passed and study them for yourselves. The information, as I said earlier, we've taken directly from the King James Version of the Bible, but we hope for you to use whatever by a, a version of the Bible that you choose because the Holy Spirit is going to reveal uh, the re revelation to you regards to whatever scripture that you're using to do that because all scripture is written under the auspices and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So let us go forth now. We're now going to go into the a lot of part of chapter five and chapter five now is saying in the and every creature which is in heaven on the earth and on the earth and under the earth as such as in the sea are uh, all that are in them uh, hell her her is saying blessing honor glory power be unto him that sits upon the throne and unto the lamb forever and ever and the four beasts said amen and the 24 elders worship him that lives forever. Now let us get into chapter six and we'll see chapter six now introducing the opening of the seven seals. So chapter six, verse one to verse two is the first seal. Chapter three to four is the second seal. Chapter five through six is gonna be the third seal. Chapter four, uh, the fourth seal is gonna be chapter six, uh, six, 11, I mean seven through eight. The fifth seal is going to be chapter 6, 9 through 6, 11. The sixth seal is going to be 6, 12 through 6, 17. The seventh seal is going to be chapter 8, 1 through chapter 11, 19. Now, that's the significance of this pro whole process. And what you see on the screen is chapter 6. And the chapter 6 is going to give you what is happening in the first seal that's being opened and then down through the fourth the fifth seal but the the lesson is going from chapter 5 1 through chapter 11 19 and we'll see how these seals that are being opened five of them was opened in chapter 6 but yet when we get to chapter 7 it goes to chapter 8 and from chapter 8 1 all through chapter 11 19 is going to be the seventh seal and when the seventh seal is open you're going to see some things that's happening that you don't see that's happening in for instance the first seal in the first seal you see he said when he opened the first seal you see and i heard as it were the noise of thunders a thunder one of the four beasts saying come and see well you see come and see come and see come and see the four beasts was I was saying this so stop this information to make sure you understand it now at the bottom of this you see the uh, the good life video where well, the good life video is is in the giving you information about the book of Daniel and showing you how Daniel and Shat right Meshach and Bidnigo they lived the real good life and this was why we put this lesson in the to form so you can see the good life they were held captive for 70 years they were captive and four different kings for 70 years but the glory of God who worked through them to give them the knowledge the wisdom the understanding the might and all the things that they needed in order to give the kings the information that the kings wanted so the kings then elevated them or promoted them in the providence of Babylon to the second level in the kingdom so what we dub this lesson here to be the good life video is because they actually lived a real good life even though they were captive or slaves in Babylon and had been castrated as eunuchs in Babylon so they lived a good life because of their knowledge wisdom and understanding that they had from the Lord so we're going to now get into this a little deeper <laughs> but now stop this information this is in chapter 6 and read it for yourself regards to whatever version that God gave you to use this I'm just trying to well as a Sunday school lesson teacher show you how and where to get the information from in God's word so now this is a part chapter 6 12 is what we're seeing and he opened the sixth seal so the sixth seal goes from 6 12 down through uh verse uh 13 i mean 17. so in the sixth seal in this is something i want to show in chapter 12 uh, uh, verse 12 it said i beheld and and he had opened the sixth seal and lo there were a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of the heaven fell upon the earth even this as the fig tree uh cast her untimely figs when she is shaken by a mighty wind well these are things that we're talking about remember now we talked about the past the present and the future and when we're in making this introduction some of the things you see 
has not happened. Some of the things that you see are happening and some of the things that you see has already happened. So it's the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. But we're not going to get involved with that. We just want to show you the opening of the seals and the seven seals and what is taking place as the seals are being opened that was sealed up by Daniel. And you'll see that in the book of Daniel chapter 12 where he was given instruction to seal up the seal until end of time. So what we're talking about here in this lesson here is the opening of the seals starting with chapter 5 through chapter 11. So now in chapter 7 verse 1 through 17 we'll see some things says after these things I saw four angels standing on four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree i saw another angel ascending from the east having a seal of the living god and he sealed with a with a loud saying with a cry with a loud voice uh, of the four angels whom was given the hurt the earth saying hurt not the earth neither the sea the trees and till the seals sealed of the servants of God in their forehead. Now the servants of God, you'll see that these are the 12 tr tribes of Israel. And we know that God changed Jacob's name from Israel. That was Isaac's son, one of the Isaac's son. He had a brother named Esau, but this is the 12 sons of Jacob. And God changed Jacob's name to Israel. And these 12 sons, you see, I put them in red so you can see all 12 sons' name. We're going to go, not go through all 12 sons. But what we're trying to show in you is that the sealing in their foreheads was done by these four angels that were sent actually to hurt the earth. But then they were given instructions, instructions not to hurt the earth until the seal of the 12 sons of Israel had been sealed in the forehead. And these are in chapter 7 all the way through. Chapter 7 is the sealing of the 12 tribes of Israel. And they are in red, as you can see down in the concluding of this, is in verse 17. For the lamb which had in the middle of the throne shall feed them as shall lead them unto living fountains of water and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So this is the uh, sealing of the six seals now. So we'll go from five all the way down through seven, 17, and you can see the six seals. So make sure you stop this, go back and over this over and over again so you can see what we are talking about. I want to say this before I go too far in, in, in the next slide. And look at verse nine. And after this, I heard and lo, a great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne of the Lamb clothed with white robes and palms in their hand and cried with loud voice saying salvation to our God which sitteth upon the throne unto the Lamb. So and all of the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and the beasts fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God saying, Amen, blessing, glory, wisdom, thanksgiving, honor, power, might, God forever and ever. Amen. So all these information that you're seeing, we're talking the past, the present, the future. That's the significance of me trying to show you in this class what we're talking about. Now, you may also go and get this from some other sources. This is just information that I'm giving directly from the King James Version of the Bible. It may not be verbatim like we'll get it here in your version if you use another version and there are many versions of the bible and don't know what version you're going to have uh, use but this information here we're taking from the king james version of the bible now let's move on in chapter eight and chapter eight as i said earlier we're going to cover this the opening of the seven seal and the seven seal is being opened and showing us from eight one through eleven 19. Well, there's some things that's going to be happening in this opening of this seal because we're going to be talking about seven different angels that within this opening of the seven seal that were doing things upon the earth or will be doing things upon the earth or has already done things upon the earth. So we're going to be talking about these seven angels that's within this thing of the what we're talking about within the seven seals. So the seven seals, excuse me, I'm going to call. <coughs> The seventh seal was open 
in 8 and 1. You see, and when he opened the seventh seal, there was a silent in heaven about the uh, space of an, a half an hour. And I saw seven angels which stood before God, and, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel uh, came and stood before the altar, having the, uh, a golden censer. Now, I'm going to introduce this to you now. There's a book. I've also put a book together out of the Bible and out of the King James Version of the Bible. That's called the Book of Angels. And you'll see how many angels, uh, well, you get an idea of many of the angels that God uses in his story or his plan to show you and I what we need to do. When I say story, I'm talking about the Bible. In the Bible are many, 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 many different angels being used. And we'll see in this lesson here in chapter eight, for an example, we'll see that he opened the seventh seal. And when he opened the seventh seal, the lamb that we're talking about is opened the seven seals. We saw that back up in verse five, chapter five. The lamb is opening the, the seventh seal, and when he opened the seventh seal, he, uh, John said, and John is up in the spirit. You see that in the latter part of chapter four in the Bible, that John, who is telling this story in the book of Revelation, he was up in God's spirit seeing the lamb open these seven seals. And while he's up in God's spirit, he is also saying, and I saw seven angels which stood before God. This is John telling us about the seven angels, and these seven angels was given seven trumpets. And these seven trumpets was given to the seven angels in the eighth chapter of the book of Revelations as the lamb was opening the seven seals if you can follow me what i'm saying here so now let us go on and we're going to now see what is happening now, all of this is what we're going to be showing from this point on through the end of chapter 11 are going to be what took place as the lamb opened up the seven seals and now we're going to go in the seven seven seals to see about these seven angels that was standing before god that was given the seven trumpets okay so now we're going to move to now we're in the eighth chapter still, but in the eighth chapter in verse seven, it said, and the first angel sounded and there were followed hail and fire mingled with blood and they were cast upon the earth and the third part of the trees were burned up and all the green grass were burned up. These are the things now that are taking place Remember, all this is under the opening of the seventh seal, but we're also talking about what are taking place now with these seven angels that are sounding. So the seven first angel is already sounded, and in verse 8, you see the second angel has sounded, and in verse 10, you see the third angel is sound. Verse uh, 12 is the fourth angel sound. Verse uh, 9, 1 is where the fifth angel sounded. Now, we're going to slow this down to see now because... It's just like the world with the seven seals. The seven seals went pretty fast until you got to the, to the seventh seal. Well, the seventh seal is chapter 8 all the way through chapter 11, 19. So now we're going to talk about what is taking place with regards to the angels that are blowing the trumpets. We'll see that at four of the trumpets has already sounded in chapter 8. Well, chapter 9 is where the fifth angel sound, and then we're going to go on now, stop this information, read this, or either go to your version of the Bible or the King James Version, whatever time, whatever Bible you use, doesn't matter, and study this for yourself, because I don't have the with time to present all this in detail like you're going to get it when you go through the process, but now, I do want to emphasize some things, I put things in yellow for a reason, and that's to let you see what's taking place with this, these angels that are oh, whoa, oh, opening up these trumpets, okay? So the angels are going on now, and what is taking place? Look, I put this in green. I don't want to skip this. And when the third angel sounded, there fell upon a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and fell upon the third part of the river and upon the fountains of water. And the name of the star was Wormwood, and the third part of the waters became Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because of they were made bitter. And, and this is what took place when the, uh, when the third angel sounded. The fourth angel, see what happened? The fourth angel sounded, says the third part of the sun was smitten and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars and the third part of, of the things was darkened and the, and the day shone not for the third part of it and night likewise 
<laughs> was affected by the angel when he opened up the fourth seal. So now in the fifth seal, he said, I saw a, a, a star fall from heaven, having the earth, and unto him was given the keys to the bottomless pit. And, and he opened the pit and and there arose out of the smoke and pit and smoke of the great furnace of the great furnace and the sun and the air was darkened by reason of the smoke from the pit. And there came out of the smoke of the locust upon the earth. And, and you see all this is saying what this is, what it was and it is. And that's what I said, we're going to talk with one from verse can take you to the past. Another verse can take you to the future. And another verse can give you the present. So the past, the present, and the future is all being used. And sometimes it'll go to the future and come back to the present and back to the past because you know, God's words is like a double-edged sword. You can, you, you have to really, really study God's word. And if you're not mature enough to see what is going on, that's why I'm recommending that you study this for yourself and stop it and use other versions of the Bible so you can see what's being taken place in these lessons that, that I'm presenting, uh, opening of these seals. Okay, so let's move on in chapter 9, because chapter 9, he's also opening up the sixth seal. But notice, just like it were with the, I'm sorry, in the chapter 9, the seventh angel sounded. But it's just like uh, the opening of the seals. The seals was open, and we don't get to the, we haven't even gotten to the uh, seventh angel of sounding because the seventh angel of sounding we're in chapter nine and we're now being introduced in chapter nine to the sixth angel that sounded and he said i heard a voice from the four horns of the altar and which is before god saying to the sixth angel which it's uh had the trumpet loose the four angels which abound on the great river you fight you stop so you see the sixth angel now is giving instruction to another four angels you see how how god's word is and i said they're a book of angels they're all the many many angels in the book of revelations because this uh sixth angel is the one that's sounding the sixth angel and why the sixth angel sounding he's giving instructions to lose four angels which are bound in the great river euphrates so and then and the four angels which were loose which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of man. So all of this information is the past, the present, and the future. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them. And this is Paul, I mean, John, this is John telling us what he saw while he was up in God's spirit. Okay, so we're going to move on. Make sure you stop this. All you got to do is click through pause button and you can study this for yourself okay now let's go on with now at the end of chapter 9 and what chapter 9 is said and the rest of the men which were not killed by the plagues and now this is a whole different story because when you continue to read the book of revelations when you get to chapter 12 th up through 20 chapter 22 we're going to see the angels that are loosing the plagues then this was in here as the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues yet repented not of the works there of their hand that they should not worship devils or idols of golds of silver and brass or stones and wood which neither can see nor hear nor nor walk neither repented they of their murderers and of nor of the sorcerer nor of the found of uh, fornications nor of their thieves so all of these information is what's taking place now when the sixth angel is sounded okay now we're in chapter 10 we're almost at the conclusion of this and hopefully we can finish this within the hour that we have set for this to go but and i saw in chapter 10 and i saw another mighty angel come down from heaven so you see we're talking about god using angels and in the bible all from Genesis through Revelation, we'll see God using angels for that. This is your first time of seeing or having someone to introduce this to you. Make sure you go back and study the Bible for yourself so you can see some of the things that are happening in the Bible. And what is happening in this case here is that we're seeing how God is using different angels to do things in just the book of Revelations from chapter 5 through chapter 11. These are many different things, and you're going to see the same process going on if you go from chapter uh, 12 through chapter 22 in the book of Revelation. So 
Again, stop this information, study for yourself. Now look at, if you would please, uh, verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seven angels, which he shall uh, begin to sound in the mysteries of God, shall be finished as it had declared to his servants, the prophets. Okay, now the prophets that we're talking about here are the prophets back up in the Old Testament. Uh, if you can see what I'm saying, that's why I said the past, the present, the future, where the prophets that shut up the heaven was in the Old Testament. Remember, it didn't rain for so many days. That was a prophet that shut up the heavens. And then there's one that touched the wearers and the river turns. Well, those are prophets back up in the Old Testament. Well, here we are in the New Testament telling us what, the, what took place when the sixth angel sounded. And all this is actually taking place when the lamb opened up the seventh seal. The several seals started in chapter 8, 1, and it goes all the way through chapter 11, uh, 19. So you see the several seal that was open is what we're talking about now, but it's all under the sixth angel that sounded, if you can follow what I'm saying. If not, stop this information, break it down, write it down so you can see what we're talking about with making this presentation to you. Okay, so we're not going to prolong this. We're just going to go on now. Make sure you go to the, what you're seeing in blue, the Good Life video, and, and see that because that's all 12 chapters of the book of Daniel. And it's giving you some ideas of, in the book of Daniel about what we're showing here with the opening of the seven seals in the book of Revelations. Okay, so that's just how it is. That's how it is. It was taken from the Bible to show you how it is and why it is and what God is presenting to us in his holy word. And his holy word is the only living word that there is all the other books that are written matter of fact we tell us in the in the 21st chapter of the book of john said if all the books was written about jesus christ and what he has done was going to do that the world itself would not be big enough to hold the books that's just how much power that we're talking about it is in god's word which is the bible for us to get an understanding of what we need to do in order for us to live according to the will that God has set for us to live in order for us to get what we just prayed about, what Jesus Christ is praying to his father that took place before the world was created, where Jesus Christ came down out of eternity up on the earth as a man, and then to get us what God had given him before the earth was created, which is the glory of God. That's what we prayed about in the prayer. So make sure you go back and learn the Lord's prayer so you can see what we're talking about is that the glory of God is what he wants to give you and I. It's his glory that we need to inherit in order for us to have eternity when we leave the earth. We all are going to die because when God came to out of eternity over into time to get us and out of the dusk and we were so, uh, uh, formed and see that in Genesis chapter two, uh, two. we were formed in ch chapter two, verse eight through. We were formed from the dust, and God breathed into the dust the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So all we are are a living soul. And one of these days, the living soul within our bodies are going to leave. We are all are going to die. And when our body goes back to the dust. The soul within us, it within us are going to go back into eternity. And we want it to go back to eternity so we can be with God in eternity and not in what we see in the book of Ezekiel, that we won't be laying into our bed uh, in the sides of the pit for eternity and burning for eternity. Because we just talked about the, the, the pit and, and who's going to be living in the pit and all these you know, then lessons that we've given in this Sunday school lesson for today's class, but we are living souls is what we're talking about in the whole process. And this presentation here is about our soul and what our soul is going to be in eternity and what is going to take place, uh, what is taking place and what has already taken place. I'm going to move on with this. Now we're in chapter 10 and with chapter 10 is where now the sixth angel has sounded the sixth angel has sounded and all of this what we're talking about from the time we started this in chapter 8 1 is where the seventh seal was open remember we're still under the opening of the seventh seal and within the seventh seal are these angels that are sounding and we're up to the sixth angel right now to bring you up to where we are
All right, so now we're in chapter 11, and this is in the conclusion of this presentation. But the significance of this, I want to show you what and how there are two people on earth. There are always two people on earth because God took out of one people his people, and his people are considered to be the Jews or the Hebrews or whoever we want to name them. They are God's chosen people. And what he's now saying, and these are mine, and I'm going to leave the Gentiles to my son as an inheritance. So as many of the Gentiles that want to come to my son and be let him be your lord jesus christ i sent to save the world that i love so much i sent my son down i created the world and the world went through some things that it was not supposed to go through because you will see this in other lessons come to bible class one of the first thing that you saw when i started this presentation uh, up in the lord's prayer at the bottom of the lord's prayer you saw come to bible class.com or if you come to bible class.com it'll show you some things that took place before god finished creating the world that God sent his son down for you and I to have what he meant for you and I to have in his plan. And the Bible is God's plan. If you don't understand a plan, then you need to understand that God's word, the Bible, is his plan for your life and your salvation in your life, for you to be with him where he is in eternity. And he sent his son down out of eternity for you to and I to have his glory, which is eternity. And then once we receive the glory that Jesus Christ came to give us and our soul goes out of its body that we're living in, then the soul will be with Jesus Christ in, in his kingdom. And if you're not already born, if you're born into one of the people that God has chosen, that would be the Jewish person. If you're not born into the Jewish person, then you're the Gentile. And what it's saying here in chapter 11, verse 1 is saying that and there was given unto me a reed like a rod and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of god and the altar and them that worship therein but the court which is without or on the outside of the temple leave out and measure it not for it is given to the gentiles and the holy city shall they trod under foot 42 months. Stop. Uh, what this is talking about is the temple, the kingdom of God. And you will see that if you continue to study in the book of Revelation, when we get to chapter 21, you're going to see that there's a great city that's going to come down, the new Jerusalem up on the new earth. And it's going to be the city of God. It's going to be 12,000 furlongs times 12,000 furlongs long, 12,000 furlongs wide, 12,000 furlongs high, and 12,000 furlongs deep. That's what we're talking about, the new city. And we'll see the new city measurements over into the book of Ezekiel. That's why I tell you the book of Ezekiel and the book of Daniel were named after angels. And there are two books in the Bible that we can get understanding from about the past, the present, and the future. Because on this lesson here, we're talking about the things that took place when the lamb opened up the seven seals and within these seven seals are all these other instructions like this and the one that we just alluded to here in chapter 11 of the book of revelation is letting us know that god has a special place for the those of us that are gentiles that accept jesus christ as our lord and savior we are then have an opportunity the gentiles to have a special place in the court of the temple of God. Now, understand what I just said about the temple of God being 12,000 furlongs. Well, a furlong is three quarters of a mile. Not quite a mile, but three quarters of a mile. Now, multiply three quarters of a mile in your mind times 12,000 long, 12,000 wide, 12,000 deep. You see, now we're talking about how huge the city of God is, and he's the temple of God will be in the city. And we're talking about the Gentiles who will be in a special court in the temple of God. So if you have an imagination, let it work for you now, because what we're talking about is coming directly from God's word. And it's saying, and I, and I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth understand that information we're not going to try to explain it to you uh study this for yourself this is a level chapter of the book of a book of daniel and what we're talking about and we're going to see in a few minutes in the level chapter is where we're going to see the the seventh angel going to sound 
Well, the seventh angel that's going to sound here in the 11th chapter is all taking place under the seventh angel, uh, the uh, uh, seal that's being unsealed, that's being opened. The seventh seal is being opened at the at this present time, but we saw that back in, in chapter 8, verse 1, where he opened the seventh seal. Well, we're still in the seventh seal here in chapter 11 because the seventh seal was opened in 8 1. It goes all the way through 11 19. But still, in 11, uh, chapter 11, we are now in ending up the opening, I'm sorry, the, the seventh angel blowing the trumpet. If I hope I have not confused you, but sometimes I can do. But in order to understand, in depth of what you see, stop this information and study it, or go to your Bible or to any other Bible and study it in order to get your understanding of what God's going to give you. If you don't understand, God said, study his word, asking it shall be given, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be opened unto you, for everyone who asks it will receive it, and he or she who seeks it will find it, and to him or her to knock it shall be opened. So you're going to get the understanding that you gonna God want you to have, not what I want you to have. You're gonna get the understanding that God wants you to have when you go study his word and your understanding may be different than your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, or anyone else that you know. Your understanding it may be different because God deals every one of different fingerprint and God deals every one of revelation from him just like he does your fingerprints. But there are no two people that's got the two same fingerprints and there are no two people going to get the identical revelation from God. But God's plan, which is the Bible, is open for anyone who want to get that revelation or that fingerprint, as it were, from God for your so, which is going to go someday back into uh, the temple of God, out of the body, your living soul is going to go back and God will recognize the fingerprint because he knows every one of the souls that he has put into the bodies. If you can follow me in the bodies are dying and being reborn every day. But God still is in charge of all the process, if you can follow what I'm saying in this. Now, we're going to conclude this because we've been at this now for some time. And now here we are back to the end of the process. We're in chapter 11, verse 15, where the seventh angel is sounding. But the seventh angel is sounding right here in chapter 11, verse 15. But remember, all this took place back up on the chapter 8, verse 1, where the seventh seal was open. So the seventh seal is in conclusion right here in chapter 11, verse 19, if you follow me. And within this the seventh seal or the opening of Messiah with the sounding of the seven angels. So here now we're at the seventh angel that we saw introduced to us back up in chapter eight. The seventh angel is now sounding here in chapter 11 under the seventh seal that was also at the beginning of chapter eight. I hope I have not confused you. And if not, if I have, Please go back and see what I'm talking about and take a piece of paper yourself and write it down for yourself so you can see what I'm talking about. Because now under this seventh age of the sounding, and there was a great voice from heaven saying, the kingdom of the world are become as the kingdom of our Lord and his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. We're talking about the seventh angels open and see what sounded and you see what is taking place, what God is telling you and I, that the, when the seventh angel is sounding his trumpet, what is taking place, that there were great voices. Y'all notice we said with the past, the present, the future. Well, this is were. <laughs> this is the word, the word, the verb were is being used to show that when the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven uh, saying the kingdoms, watch this, not one, but the kingdoms of the world uh, become the kingdoms of our Lord and his Christ. So you see now the Lord is going to find us when you go through and study the remainder part of chapter uh, uh of the book of Revelation, you will see that the kingdom of the Lord and the kingdom of Christ are the kingdom is just like you and I have in children. And then within our house is our child's or our children's rooms and within the house. And the God's however many children we have, but if we only have one, that child, and using this from, from metaphor, can have a room. And that room within our house is our child's room. We'll even call it go to your room. And we'll and we'll let the child understand in our house that it's his house within our house where Jesus Christ has 
uh, uh, kingdom within God's kingdom, and you and I, the Gentiles, can go into God's kingdom in his son's house within the God's kingdom. And all of it is the same because we just saw in his prayer that we are one. We'll become one with God. That's what Jesus Christ is praying for us to have. That's why he prayed before he died for you and I to have the glory that God had given him. And for you and I to get the glory that Jesus Christ got, we got to live according to the will of God. And Jesus Christ has already prayed for us, Father, I will that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory for which you have given me. For you loved me before the foundations of the world. So let us talk about this word love. Love is righteousness. Love. God tells us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. The clue there is that you cannot love yourself until you love your neighbor. You must love your neighbor. If the if we understood the power of love, there would be no wars because there would be no robberies and no murders and no and no <laughs> and no thievery because we would love our neighbor. God's love. And we started in the prayer that that we would manifest ourselves and, and, and that we that God loved them just like he loved him. Well, God loves us like he loves his son. God is love and God's righteousness is love. God is love. If you can understand that God cannot be hate. God is love. But love can chastise us to make us think that he hates, even though in his word he did say that he hated Esau but what he was talking about in that and you can see that in the scripture is that what he's what he was there what he was God does not he hates pride God does hate pride and he because he's love and pride over want to overpower righteousness if you can follow what I'm saying so God's love for you and I is just like the love that we want to have for our neighbor. God's love, which is righteousness, is what he wants you and I to have for our neighbor. That's why his instruction is to love your neighbor as yourself. So you love your neighbor first. Your neighbor has to be loved first before you give yourself any thoughts about it. Now we're going to conclude this. I'm taking up too much of your time. At the bottom down here where you see what we're looking at, this is a picture of Daniel. I did not uh, produce this picture. The only thing on that picture that I produced was the writing about Daniel to give an idea <clears throat> that when God in the chapter 20 of the verse of Kings and also the stories in the book of Isaiah and the book of quite a few books in the Old Testament, Jeremiah, where the story about Daniel and his Shat right and Meshach and Abednego, the story is there, but according to the information that you see in chapter 20 uh, Kings, you'll see that God is telling Isaiah to go tell Hezekiah that he has to die and get his house in order. Well, when he uh, Isaiah told Hezekiah that he had to die to get his house in order, Hezekiah prayed to the Lord to remind the Lord of his goodness and how he had done things for the Lord. And the Lord extended his time to live 15 years. And then God told Isaiah to go tell Hezekiah that during that 15 year period, there will be sons issued from him or be, be gotten by him. And those sons will become units in the house of Babylon. And no place in the Bible does it show any any other place where the eunuchs that were eunuchs in the house of Babylon, you see that throughout the Old Testament, you see where the eunuchs were in the house of Babylon, and those eunuchs were Meshach, Shadrach, Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego, whose name were changed from what their real name were, and on the screen in the picture that you see, you can see the real name of Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whose name were changed and given Persia's name. Well, that same principle, and you can see that this video is being made in the United States of America, and in the United States of America, there were slaves, and those slaves were brought into America from out of Africa, and their names were changed, and they become Browns and Richardsons and Thompsons and all these other names, but their names were changed just like Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Daniel's name was changed. So this picture is going to give you a, well, a whole lot of words because to say a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, you notice this picture where this, I didn't have to make this picture, but it's giving you a clue that Daniel was in the lion's den. And you notice Daniel did pray. The ninth chapter in the book of Daniel is where Daniel is praying to the Lord. And Jesus Christ, 
prayed to his father, the first part of this, and we notice the first thing in this prayer is that Jesus was looking up into the Lord's face. Well, this prayer, he is depicting Daniel looking up, but he's praying because Daniel's prayer, God answered Daniel's prayer to get his people out of captivity back into where they came from, was taken from. And you see that story in the book of Ezra and also in the book of Nehemiah, where they're building the temple in the book of Ezra and they're building the wall in the book of Nehemiah, 300 and I'm sorry, 42,320 construction people are doing this. And you'll see all that in the book of, of uh, Ezra in the book of Nehemiah. But the significance of this picture here is to show you the one where Daniel is looking up. He's praying to God. And the other one is to show you that you and I have to go up into eternity from this earth. We're going to go into eternity if we hear in time before Jesus come back. But if we come back, then we'll already it's a whole different story. But most I'm telling you, when our body leaves the place we call our soul, that is, leaves the place we call home, our body, it's going to go back to its resting place. And that will be in eternity. And the, the picture on the right is just depicting for you, a picture is worth a thousand words, that you are going to have to excel up into the eternity of God once you leave your body. Go to come to BibleClass.com. You saw that at the beginning of this process and here at the end, because the first shall be the last, the last shall be first. We're showing you that if you go and get an understanding of what's being presented in that Southern School lesson to come to Bible class, then you'll see what and why it is so important for you and I to live the life that the recipe or the Bible has set for us to live in order for us to ascend up in eternity with the Lord who has set us here to get as many people as possible into him. And he gave us that instructions in Matthew in chapter 28, giving us the instructions how to go out and bring them into the world. Now, we got just a couple more things to do before we finish this. And we almost at the conclusion, uh, at the center of this attraction here, it says a good life video. And the good life video is the start of this information. And that is the, in the book of Daniel to show now we're at the end of the seven seals that what we've been talking about the opening of the seventh seal well the opening of the seventh seal in the, the story within the seventh seal opening in here in chapter 11 verse 19 it said and god's and the temple of god was open in heaven the temple of god was open in heaven and that was seen in his temple the ark of testament now, the Ark of Testament, we'll see that back in the Old Testament. There are other lessons in here about the Ark of the Testament. And there was lightnings and voices and thunderings and the earthquake and great hail. That's the end of chapter 11. And uh, then in chapter 12, it goes into uh, the, the woman that you're going to see in chapter 12. Okay, but this is the end of chapter 11 and the opening of the seven seals started back in chapter 5, verse 1. And opening of the seven seals, it concludes in 9, 19, is saying, and the temple of God was open in heaven. All this is taking place under the opening of the seven seal. You can, I can pause. All of the things that we've been talking about in this whole lesson is the things that have taken place when the lamb opened the seven seals. And the seventh seal is when he opened in chapter 8, verse 1, down through 11, 19. And we'll see when he opened the seventh seal in 8, 1, the last thing that happened when he opened the seventh seal, but to you and I to see that, uh, that the temple of God was open in heaven. And that was seen in God's temple, the Ark of Covenant. And in and and also in God's uh, 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 temple, you saw there was lightnings and thunderings, there was uh, uh, voices, and a, and a, and an earthquake and great hail. These are the things that we saw when he opened up the seventh seal and the seventh angel sounded. Okay, we're moving on now. In conclusion of this. My name is David Richardson, and this is a picture of me. And I'm just trying to depict to show you pictures of me to show that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit is the same God. That is one plus one plus one equal one. That is God plus the Son plus the Holy Spirit is God Almighty. One God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The picture is a thousand words, they say. And I'm only trying to show you in the picture that 
I'm just one man, David Richardson. I have three pictures of myself, but I'm still just David Richardson. Above my head is that breath of the living soul. Whether is just what it's talking about, the breath of the living soul is a lesson, a Sunday school lesson for today's class. And on the left side of my picture, you'll see 10 different Sunday school lessons or uh, well, nine because one of those on the 10 is number seven is the breath of the living soul. Uh, and, and this is just for a reason. But make sure you go to these Sunday school lessons so you can see now at the bottom it says Sunday lesson for today's class. It is a Sunday lesson for today's class. Whatever day you see it, it's also I didn't put the school there, but it's a it's a lesson for today's class. If you do it on Sunday, it's a lesson for today's class or whatever day you do it. Now, I, one thing you can think about this is we use some of us use Sunday as our Sabbath day. Well, whatever day that you decide you want to give your Sabbath. Whatever day you can, it's a Sabbath day. But God wants us to have a Sabbath day. That is to rest one day. Don't work all the whole seven days, all the whole year. Give one day out of the uh, week a uh, Sabbath for God because God created the world. He said in the book of Genesis in chapter one that he created the world in six days. And on the seventh day, in uh, chapter two, one is saying, and he rested on the seventh day. Well, we don't see any place in the Bible where there is an eighth day because then we have to conclude then that God is still resting in his rest, in his Sabbath day, if you can understand what I'm saying, because God is telling us that his Sabbath is most important to us, that we should have a day of Sabbath and not to disturb, not to be disturbed on our Sabbath and not to disturb God on his Sabbath. And in the book of Hebrew in chapter three and chapter four, he talking about us to enter in and why he would not allow the children of Israel who he had chosen, who did not obey him. He would not allow them and who had would turn them back from him. He would not allow them to enter into his rest. You'll see that in the book of Hebrew chapter three and chapter four. So now you and I have a chance to enter into God's rest. He is resting on the seventh day that he's rested. Now, one day with God is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. How many days are God going to rest? We have no idea, but we can enter into God's rest by simply obeying his word and following what he tell us to do in his word, which is the Bible. It is the only living entity that there is. There only is only one living entity, and that is God. Everything else is dead or either trying to live. And we are going to die in order for us to live. We have to die in order to live. Jesus Christ died in order for us to live. You have to understand that he, he, he was living, but he died. Life died in order to take the sting out of death. You see that I'm going to conclude. I'm going to conclude this. I may have already taken up too much of your time. I'm going to go now to the last part of this process and close this out. My name is David Richardson, as you can see. And I'm going to close this out. The whole purpose of this is we talk about back up in chapter uh, four about about I'm sorry, I'm sorry chapter five six. It talked about the seven spirits of God that were sent forth into all the earth. Well, this is just to give you an idea of how and what the seven spirits of God are. You see on the screen it said Revelation five six, which we've already passed. It talked about the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And in the book of Isaiah, you'll see chapter eleven. Uh, two through four or uh, one through four it talks about the seven spirits of God matter of fact it names the seven spirits of God as you can see and all I've done is take those seven spirits of God and and show them as keys falling out of heaven because if you have the seven spirits of God you have the keys that you need in order to live the life that God wants you to live it's the knowledge it's the wisdom it's the understanding it's might counsel the fear of the Lord and the Lord's gl glory resting up on you those are the seven spirits of God and those are the seven keys that we need in order to live the life that God wants us to live. If we have these seven keys, we all we do have them. If we exercise them, if we know how to apply them in our lives, if we know how to apply knowledge, if we know how to apply understanding, and God said, above all, I get and get understanding. If we know how to apply the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God, if we know all seven spirits of God and how to apply the seven spirits of God, then we can do what God is asking us to do. But of course, we can do that because Jesus Christ 
had the seven spirits of God. And that's what Isaiah is prophesying about in chapter 11 of the book of Isaiah, where he named the seven spirits of God that Jesus Christ would have when he come to the earth, where the prophecy of Isaiah is about the coming of the Christ to the earth. And he's telling us in chapter 11 what the Christ will have when he come upon the earth. That's why the Christ uh, Jesus Christ lived as a man and, and God at the same time, but he did not have any sin. He didn't have no ills for anybody. He had nothing, he had nothing, nothing but love because love is righteousness and the righteousness of God is love. So we have to love in righteousness, not in lust. We, I, let's talk about me. I lust in love. My love is lust. I love you because I need you to do this for me before I can do that. My lust for you is for you to do this. That's, that's love. It's not love. It's lust. But God's love is righteousness. And I have to love you, my neighbor, first in righteousness as for I love myself. That's what God is saying. And I do that and apply these seven keys of the seven spirits. Then I have done what God wanted me to do and commanded me to do and to live the life that he want me to live. Now I am going to conclude this now because I'm at the end, but make sure you go down to the seed of Abraham.com, not seed of Abraham, but seed of Abram, A-B-R-A-B-A-M. Go there and you can see how to get copies of the seven spirits of God. This is David Riches and I want to tell you I love you and this is concluding this presentation. Bye-bye. Have a good day.